Welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to get started with a Zettelcast and system. Because lots of people want to know about how to do it, what I think are the important points of it. So buckle up. Now before we get started, there is at least one thing that you need to know is that if you're going to start get started with Zettelcast and need to read How to Take Smart Notes by Sanka Arns, I already have a summary review of this book, so I will link to that above. And then you can go look at that if you want to as well. And there's also a few terms that we need to define before we can really dive in and talk about the whole system and kind of what I think the essential building blocks are and how you can get started with it. First term we need to define is fleeting notes. So this is any idea that you have as you're reading just throughout the day. It's kind of like your inbox, really. It's nah, kind of your inbox, but everything, all of your fleeting notes will end up in your inbox um, as you're going throughout your day. Next up is literature notes. So as I read this book, I took literature notes. You can actually see my literature notebook because I have to keep a paper notebook for it right back here. Um, and I do that for every book. I keep notes on what I'm reading so that I can connect it to other notes, really. Um, I don't, I pull some quotes, but I mostly think like, oh, this book, you know, this idea relates to this other idea over here, or here's what I think about that. That sounds like whatever. Um, and that's my literature notes. They also end up in my inbox. And the final thing is your, your archive or your main library or your slip box, depending on what term you want to use. And that is any notes that kind of make it through your filter of your inbox and get over to your uh, archive. That's it. The one that stays the longest. Those are the notes that actually are something that you're going to keep long term and keep referring to. The first thing you need when you get started with any type of Zettelkasten system is number one, an inbox. That's a place to put every little piece of information you have, everything you come across uh, that may, may make it into your main system. Most of mine doesn't. A lot of, I probably say 60% of the articles that I save, uh, of the ideas that I save, of the notes I write down, don't actually make it into my main system because I look at them later and sometimes the articles just plain old not interesting anymore. I use DevonThink, uh, DevonThink to go and DevonThink on Mac OS, but honestly, mainly DevonThink to go because I operate on my iPad mostly um, as my inbox. That's where every article I save uh, goes. That's right. I read from there. I've actually linked to this before I've done this. So I'll link that up above. I've done a video on a DevonThink shortcuts Zettelcast and setup that starts my new note in uh, in actually one writer, but in uh, in files so that I can have a good Zettelcast and note set up. That'll all be up above. My other inbox really is my literature notebook, which I said is over here. Um, and I take that and I've done a, again, how to take notes on books. I'll link that up above. It talks about my literature notebook and it walks you through taking notes on, I believe it's The Second Mountain by David Brooks is the book I go through there. My main archive Zettelcast and system is actually Obsidian. The reason I don't put my big long articles in there or resources I'm saving in there is because Obsidian is for my thoughts. It's not for everyone else's thoughts. It's really easy to start this system, to start a Zettelcast and, and fall into the collector's fallacy. I call it collector versus connector. So a collector just grabs a bunch of stuff and says, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm building knowledge because I've saved you know 300 articles this week or a whole bunch of bookmarks. I'll totally get back to them. And the truth is 99% of them you're never going to look at again. You're just never going to find it. So it doesn't matter. Um, and you're fooling yourself into thinking that you're really advancing your knowledge. The only thing that should be going into your Zettelkasten system is your thoughts on notes or if you're grabbing a quote, like a quote that and it connects to something else. The only exception to that is when you're just starting out. So um, I just read recently, uh, I'm not talking to white people about race. Uh, and I'd read a few books on uh, Native Americans earlier this summer, or uh, First Nations, we'd call them in Canada. And I didn't have like that was kind of a blob of information on its own. I didn't have it connecting into a lot of other notes at the beginning, because I was really starting even back in January, my, my knowledge in those areas because I'm a white dude, clearly. So I didn't have a lot of knowledge around uh, people of color, minorities, whatever you want to call it, First Nations uh, in our area. 
And there was certainly a time, like my first note had no connections whatsoever. It had a bunch of, hmm, this would be interesting uh, notes of like, these are further things I should discover. But it didn't have any new thoughts of my own yet because I didn't have any and I didn't have any to relate it to. Um, and as I read more books, now we're starting to see some connections or starting to grow like a second web of information. But at the beginning, you may not have that. That's okay. Now, choosing an application for your Zettelkasten system, it kind of doesn't matter in many ways. Um, there's lots out there. I've linked a bunch below. There's Rome, there's Obsidian, there's Zettler, there's uh, Set Up with DevonThink, there's lots of different resources. The big thing is that even if you're using DevonThink for an inbox and DevonThink has separate databases and then a separate, so a separate database for your um, Zettelkasten system, the important point is really to keep your inbox and your Zettelkasten separate so that you have lots of inputs and really strong filters on what's worthy to get in because I'm willing to bet most of the information is redundant or doesn't, it's just not useful long term. The reason I picked Obsidian is because it is just Markdown files. So I have all my own data. It's literally sitting on my hard drive on my Mac. It's sitting on iCloud. It's sitting in Dropbox. I don't have to worry about um, you know losing my data one day. Um, really, it's backed up to Backblaze then. I have multiple versions of it, and I'm not relying on someone else's sync service. Yeah. This also means that I can move to some other system fairly easily. Any system that imports Markdown files, I just have them and all my links will work still, everything, because that's just how the whole thing works. If you do end up choosing like a custom or proprietary solution, make sure that it's got good export just in case it goes away, right? If Obsidian goes away, then it's just gone, right? Uh, I would lose the app. I wouldn't lose the application actually because it's on my hard drive. Eventually I'd lose it because it wouldn't support some new operating system. Um, unlike, I'm just going to pick on Rome, Rome Research web-based. If it goes away and they shut the doors and you're like, okay, well, I've got 30 days to find something new. Like, you just, it's just done. There's nothing you can do anymore. So making sure you have a good export is important and you need to look into this. I remember years ago, Evernote was the big hotness. Uh, and then it stopped being so hot and people were like, how do I export it? Basically, there's no good way. It was all kind of terrible. So that's what you were stuck with, terrible. Finally, where do people get stuck in their Zettelkasten system? Ultimately, there's two spots they get stuck. First, they often get stuck in collection mode. They just grab a bunch of resources from people. They don't really do any other thinking on it. They don't expand on it. And most importantly, they don't publish. The entire Zettelkasten system, if you read this book, How to Take Smart Notes, which is kind of the book to go on it, the entire system is all about publishing, getting your information out there in some fashion. This talks about research papers because that's it's academic, but video, audio, something. It's publishing, getting your thoughts back out, combining them um, to share with other people, to share in some fashion so that you can recombine the thoughts that you've had, um, the resources you found, and make something useful. The second spot that people get stuck is finding software. Ultimately, there's no perfect software out there. Just like there is no perfect task manager out there. There's lots of good ones, but they all have issues, right? Uh, Tick Tick is a good one. It has a not a great review. Um, I'm having trouble getting the email, like being able to send emails into it from Spark. OmniFocus is great too. Uh, it's got one of the best, it's the best review system. That's it. There's no other application I've seen that has as good a review system, but it doesn't let you do time blocking like Tick Tick does. Things. Pretty mellow one. Like it's got lots of power, but it's pretty mellow. Like it's a good intro to like, I need a task manager. It's a great one for that. But it doesn't have some of the power features like custom perspectives like you'd see in OmniFocus. It doesn't have the calendaring system like you see in TickTick. Same thing goes for your knowledge network stuff, right? Realm Research is pretty good by all accounts. A little on the pricey side. Um, I think it's $15 a month US. Expensive but it's got some really great features. Obsidian is, again, you own all your files. Right now, it's still in development. It doesn't have some of the um, filtering that I want for my graph view, although they did just release on the Insider build um, on 0.8.0. Some really good, like, grep, um, uh, it's not grep, uh, regex search operators and a whole bunch of other, like, custom search operators. And they say, yeah, in the next couple of versions, we'll be adding stuff like this to your graph view so you can like really filter out like what you see in your graph view. 
but then you have to store your own files, right? Like there is trade-offs for each tool. No tool will be perfect. So the important point is to give yourself like a week or two, watch like 15 videos on whether to use whichever system and then pick one and then stick with it. And right, we talked about import and export. If you know you picked a system that has good import and good export, then you know when you hit a problem in like two or three years and let's say this doesn't suit me anymore, you can look around the change. The truth is though, most times changing your any, almost any software, your task manager, your knowledge network system, anything like that, the cost of trading systems, all that extra work you're gonna put in entirely negates the benefits you get, right? Uh, I had to move into Obsidian and now I changed my notes a lot based on how to take smart notes, but moving a lot in there, like it's taking me months to get a lot of my notes back in into a useful format right? To move all of my old literature notes. I used to not really take notes like that, but I always kept a, I've kept a literature notebook for years. I've got a stack of them over there for, uh, I think I've got six or seven over there for different years. And I still have to move all of those back into Obsidian, into how I take my notes now. That's a lot of effort involved. That's also effort I can't put into finding new information. That's effort I can't put into publishing, to doing video, into even hanging out with my kids. So it's really expensive to change software. Don't just jump on the new software bandwagon. That's it. That's your intro to what a good Zettelkasten system is, according to me. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, you can subscribe. Then you hit the bell and YouTube lets you know that I'm putting out videos. If you really liked it, loved it, I don't know, there's gotta be a better word than like love. Eh. You can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale where you can support the channel. Have an excellent day.